Right, we're back on part two of the JR500S, uh, and um, I'm happy to say that uh, that wire that needed soldering on the top was um, pretty pretty basic. And we've gone with um, powering up with everything off, and we're using a lot of little clip leads and stuff here at the moment just to uh, to get by. But um, uh, on the whole, no smoke pouring out. Valves are all firing up beautifully. Power supply really intact. So look, that's really good. That's the sort of stuff we want to see. And um, what I've done is um, uh, turn the power down a fair bit on my um, uh, 7850 sitting over here. Uh, although have I? I'm just going to turn down more. That's better. About five watts there. And what I wanted to do, I've turned the um, I'm turning the um, RF gain control back down on this one too. And what we're trying to do is to just see one two one two. One two, one two, one two, three, four, five. One two, one two, one two. This is testing on sideband to a JR five hundred. One two, three, four, five. JR five hundred S receiver. There's a fair bit of feedback there because of the fact we're we're hitting that receiver pretty hard. But VK three Charlie Mike test concluded. Okay, so that was just me live. Uh, I actually <laughs> put that out on the antenna, so hence the call sign. Um, but uh, it's on 7093, which um, won't be busy till about um, uh, oh, probably about uh, four o'clock ton uh, tonight. Uh, but uh, what we did was we uh, knocked our power down to five watts. So, well, right there on uh, that fellow there, and um, that was just to not overload this receiver too much. Which in the end we had to back our RF gain down a bit. All right, just let me set something else up. Uh, there's not much active on the band at the moment, but um, oh, and something I should say uh, before I make all that noise. So check me out. Just below 7.1, just below 100, right on the 0.90. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, for 7.093, that's a pretty close. Uh, I don't know if I'd bother calibrating, you know, this receiver uh, too much. The um, uh, the start of it's very good. Now, look, these were always, anything in this sort of region, uh, always heard better on AM. Um, you could, you, you know, AM, they were fantastic. Sideband, you had to twiddle a bit and sit there. Um, there's a control on the back as well that you can use. And your, as you can see, your pre-selector. No different to any ham radio, you know, that's uh, 520s and different ones with um, uh, having to just peak that. And your RF gain is... Uh, and then the other thing too, um, these things, best thing you can ever do, get a can of Deoxit D5, spray every control. <laughs> it was pretty crackly and um, uh, we couldn't get any volume out of it initially. I was going to show you that bit, but um, I fixed it so quick with the uh, Deoxit that uh, I didn't get to show you. Um, the RF game was a bit notchy. It's still a little bit notchy, to be honest. Um, but if I just bring that volume up, you can just hear, oh no. Actually, yeah, just a tad notchy there but um, nowhere near as bad as it was before. So um, pretty good news. All right, um, I'm not real hopeful. I'm just seeing a signal up on about seven. Oh, where's that? Where's that? Where's that? All right, so 7144 somewhere there. Uh, so let me just pause and I'll see if I can hear it on this other one. Well, how's that? It's not strong at the moment. And then see what you can do is you can just go to the side of it. And you can just you can just go But um it's hearing um a Tasmanian station which it's unfortunate <laughs> anyway, but for the sake of the test <laughs> ironic. Um and I've got to tell you, we can probably pick that a bit with that pre-selector. <laughs> and these are some pretty rudimentary um, connections at the moment. Just have a look at that band switch. Have a look at that. Mm, probably not too bad, actually. Um, just might give that a bit of a spray. I haven't had a chance to get to the band switch, uh, but we'll have a look at that. But for all intents and purposes, um, let's just see if there's anybody else uh, around. You couldn't get that unlucky, could you, twice? Uh, yeah, I think um, at the moment, 
everybody's at work uh, and uh, till about four o'clock you're not going to get huge loads some people have got all day <laughs> and as you can see yeah the RF gains not not notchy anymore that's good actually um, we're going to need to see if we can pick that receiver a little bit. I, I reckon we can get that, you know, hearing a lot more signal strength. It's probably a little bit deaf at the, well, probably a lot deaf uh, at the moment. But um, the, the way we've got the antenna hooked up with cook, uh, uh, leads, sorry, with uh, uh, alligator clips, sorry, um, that's not, uh, not helping it. But it's actually resolving sideband better than I thought it would. Let's have a look at him on AM. Yeah, you can hear him there. So it's that sh sh noise is him. Yeah. Now I can't can't hear the other station too well at the moment, but all right. Well, let's turn that down. And um, for all intents and purposes, this is uh, we can put the screws back in this. Um, well, not really. Actually, we might just tune that receiver a bit. Um, I need to um, take it out to the workshop and just put a SIGGEN through it, so we won't put the covers on back yet, just yet. But overall, um, we're listening to a sideband signal that's stable um, on 7 megs, about 7.144. Uh, a little bit off on its dial, but you know, like I could always just sort of do this. <laughs> uh, 714, where are we? Actually, we, we could adjust it just this way, quite seriously, it's not unusual. 7144 is about about back there. Get over. There we go. So that's 7144. Just just dropping a little bit for lower sideband. Um, and actually, we're really just talking about the receiver now. It'd be nice to just see if we could just get have a bit of a look at where that receiver. Can we hear the other station? No. All right, well, look, that's enough. Um, certainly gives you a bit of an idea how this old beast has come up from uh, straight out of the box after being freighted by bloody Australia Post. See, that pre-select is touchy, but I like it because when it picks a peak up, it picks a peak pretty well. Yeah, it's... I'll be playing with this one on a Friday night, I think. Um, well, the boys are on 80 metres, so I think that's going to be the band to, to really give that a bit of a go. Now that we're calibrated, we almost should be able to hear FT8 signals. Um, so we get a lot of strong ones of those here. Uh, where am I? I am not quite... Depends on how linear that is, actually. I was hoping just a big signal might come along, but we should be just under there somewhere... No. All right, well, look, I won't keep this going. I'll be here. You'll be sitting here for as long as I do, which is these sort of things. I love mucking around with them. All right, 73s, that's the um, Kenwood JR500S, and uh, with a few spare valves, an original box, and um, couldn't find the speaker that matched it. I had two other Kenwood speakers, but not the matching one. Um, they were, were matching to a couple of other Kenwood receivers I had, and I thought, ah, bugger, can't take those away from there. So, if anybody's got a matching speaker for a JR500S, uh, give me a call. I won't expect your call soon. <laughs> I reckon that could be a while. All right, well, last little look at this as we go. And uh, and, the, and amazing, just hearing something on 40 metres so easily. 73s, VK3, Charlie Mike.